It's Dr. Amanda with Street Smile Solutions, streetsmilesolutions.com, and today we're going to talk about severe anterior open bite cases in adults. And what would I define as severe? Well, first of all, not all anterior open bites are the same. Everyone is unique and the treatment is all going to be unique. So it's very difficult for me to put all that treatment in just one bucket. But I'm definitely separating adults from kids because when I say kids, I mean growing kids. Um, an adult could be a 14 year old girl, you know? adult could be a 17 year old male. You need to go into their growth charts. You need to do a hand wrist x-ray. You need to contact their pediatrician. You need to look for signs and symptoms and really dig into whether or not they are still growing. If they still have growth potential, you need to treat them like a child and try to grow. Okay. So that's separate. Let's say we have an adult 100% done growing patient is 30. You know, they have an anterior open bite. First thing you need to do, and I have a whole nother video that goes into this point by point, but you have to do your due diligence. One of the biggest beefs I have with Align Technology and ClearCorrect and really any of these treatment planning companies is if you submit them a case, they're going to make it look like it's possible. And for the most part, it's not always possible and it's extraordinarily unpredictable because there are a ton of variables that cause this anterior open bite unless you know what caused it and simul find out the etiology and treat that simultaneously and all its sequelae, and I'll go into that a little bit more, you can't expect this outcome to happen. It might, depending on what caused it, and it might not. And the problem with, I feel like doctors, this happens like three times a week, I see a case like this, and it just makes me absolutely infuriated. Now us orthodontists know better than this. We know that's not possible. So we just laugh at these clinchecks and we fix them and we do what we need to do and we get good outcomes because we can tweak things and we're very careful about not taking compromised cases that aren't predictable, you know? Um, or if they're not, we're gonna have a ton of disclaimers and really CYA cover your you know what, um, to make sure we're not gonna get sued on this case by making the patient worse. Because sometimes when you try to treat open bite cases, um, worse things happen, many, many worse things. And what may not be considered worse to a patient or a doctor might be worse to another patient. So you really have to outline all the risks up front. So that's why I really, really don't like general and pediatric dentists, oh, excuse, I'll say general, because I'm talking about adults taking anterior open bite cases. Now it's a millimeter anterior open bite, maybe, okay? But I'm talking about something severe, more than five, more than six millimeters of anterior open bite. And remember, if the patient is crowded, and has an anterior open bite, it's going to get worse when you straighten it. Hello. And of course you have to have a ceph. And of course you need to know how to interpret the ceph. And you have to have ceph numbers because you can't blow those teeth through the plate. The bite's going to get worse. You need to dig into the whole etiology. What caused this open bite? Is it skeletal? Was it dental? Was it related to habits? Again, one of the biggest mistakes I see is that doctors are like, oh, well, they had a habit when they were a kid. Well, yeah, they maybe did. But guess what? The bones, it caused the bones to deform. And now we have a problem and Invisalign is not going to fix this. Even if the ClinCheck says it is, guess what? I'm telling you, my experience says it's not. And even, even if it just miraculously did, and occasionally I see something, I'm like, whoa, guess what? One year later, it's not going to retain. That's the thing. What caused it will continue to cause more problems, even if you have a bonded retainer and an Essex over it. I see this time and time again, where doctors get stung, where they, they felt like they got tricked and even if it did happen, which mostly it doesn't, later it relapses and the patients are furious and it turns into litigation and other problems. And they're like, I should have known. Like, I didn't know. Why did Align Technology show me a plan that was BS? And this happens time and time again. Again, Align Technology is just doing what you're telling them to do. You send them this case, they're going to straighten it, but it doesn't mean it's really going to happen. So you need to get your staff you need to get your CEPH numbers. You need to screen for OSA. You need to screen for habits. And habits is not just active habits, putting your finger in your mouth. It's habits that might happen at nighttime. Best way to do that is send for an OSA screening. You know, you're not gonna know. You're not gonna sit in their room and watch them. You need to look for tongue thrust. You need to do a whole tongue thrust evaluation. You may need to involve an OMT. This is outside something that I know that much about. And OMTs are not always covered by insurance. So these, sometimes I recommend putting in a habit of plants for six months first and see how that goes. You're not going to just jump right into Invisalign or ClearCorrect. That's a huge, 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 huge mistake. That's all I can keep telling you. Huge mistake. Please, please, please don't do this. And I'd actually prefer you just don't take these cases at all. I want you to send these to ortho because most of the time these are going to be surgical cases for the most part for perfect. 
Maybe, depending on the staff, they might elect to do a compromise outcome where they might pull one, two, or three, or four premolars. Not my favorite. I wouldn't do that, certainly without sending for an OSA release and a screening, because I know I'm going to decrease the space for the tongue. I don't want to, you know, cause more problems for this patient if they're at risk for OSA, for sure. Um, I 100% would have them sign some disclaimers. I have some stuff for that. Um, so what's going to happen? Let's say you decided to just go for it. I don't know, my patient says they don't care. Yeah, they're saying they don't care now, but they might care later and you might be in more trouble. And once you screw this up, you're not going to be able to fix it without surgery. So who's paying for the surgery when it gets screwed up? It most likely will be you in your practice paying for this patient's surgery. And I'm just being quite transparent here because they really have, they have reason to complain. You shouldn't have done what you were, had no business doing. I'll be really honest. And I know I'm very pro general dentist doing ortho, but not these kind of cases. This is a no, please don't do these cases. So please, please, please pass these cases to the orthodontist. I just seen so much damage done over the years, a lot of my 20 years of experience. And these people are basically maimed permanently, you know, and if you take teeth out now, you're basically, I want to throw another point. If this patient has difficulty eating, functioning, speaking already. If you take teeth out and do something and make it worse, or if you just try and make things the worse, you may prevent them from being able to get to the point where they can get jaw surgery later to help them to have a better airway, to have a better quality of life. You know, if their back teeth are the only teeth they're touching, um, they're not having a good quality of life. Those teeth are gonna become damaged over time and they're gonna have difficulty eating, functioning, chewing, speaking. You are damaging or maiming this patient. So please, 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 even if you think you're going to take this as a compromise case, even if the patient has signed their life away saying, I don't care, it's fine, I'll sign whatever you want me to, I still want you to send this patient to ortho for a full surgical evaluation. It's free. They're going to get the information they need. They've been fully educated because remember, part of your, basically, what you need to do, the, the due diligence, the responsibility to this patient is to explain the risks, benefits, and alternatives. And unless you can explain the surgery, you shouldn't be doing the compromise. Someone else needs to explain the surgery. You need to get a copy of it and document it. And if the patient declines that surgery, sometimes, the reason why I really want to say this is sometimes if the patient is bad off enough and if they have good enough insurance, sometimes the surgery is fully covered by insurance. I've seen it happen time and time again, and it is a life-changing surgery. So by pushing the patient to get a compromised outcome and not explaining that that might even be possible, can't promise, but why not try? It's just a day surgery sometimes. It's not that big of a deal. And sometimes they can even do it with Invisalign and some in fixed plates and stuff like that. This doesn't have to be wires and brackets and not sometimes. I mean, that's, that's not my thing. That's really up to the surgeon and what they're doing. But sometimes we can, we can do most of the initial alignment in the Invisalign and maybe throw a few brackets on for the surgery at, at that time, you know, just for a few months. And I've seen people do it full Invisalign and just do fixed plates and screws for the surgery. So why not give the patient the ability to make the most educated decision for them? That's all I want to say. So this was kind of my PSA here. I realized I was on my soapbox, but it's just people are not getting the message. So I had to post this video. All right. Thank you.